Hey guys, it's me Evelyn here, back on Ironic X Loser, and today we're going to be doing this post to in front of you. I entitled it Patient Zero, Never Feel a Dead. Um, can these brothers survive what they have yet to see? Um, it's my own little creation of my brand. I don't have a story for this. I'm sorry, I'm not a very good writer in the sense I tried to dabble in writing but it's going off topic <laughs> so so we're going to do this poster here you can use any model you want to use three members of block b from their nilly nilly mumbo concept I'm not 100 percent sure if i'm correct on the concept photo but yeah and everything else will be given to you in a stock pack as you can see here this is the um, pack here you're going to get the photo textures and the psd um, but the coloring is not going to be the same because I don't remember what coloring I did on this image. Um, so we're going to have to recreate the coloring on our own. So of course we're going to close this. We're going to go to File, New, and we're going to go ahead and make a new document. You want to make it fanfic full size, which is 500 by 600, resolution 72, background contents. I'm going to do transparent, and I'm going to name this zombie thick poster. And now we have our blank document. So of course we're going to want to build in the background. To do that, we're going to drag in our first two textures, which is um, this one here, which is from 28 weeks later, which I just saw the other day. And um, it was on TV, of course. And we're going to use these two as our background contents, um, just to make the background. We have this and this. I'm going to click and drag this one first and as it's really high quality you're going to control T and we're going to scale it down by maybe 50% and we're going to drag it up about so center it like right about here maybe a little bit more over I can resize it just a smidge more I'm going to get more of the background in it so right about there and say ok and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag in this one as well. They're both very high quality, so don't worry about the uh, quality size. I'm going to go ahead and control T and transfer this one as well. I'm going to scale this down significantly to about here, and I'm going to move this over like so. Now we're going to have to blend the two images together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide that one, or actually make this one uh, the meteorite appear first. I'm going to go to layer, layer mask, reveal all. And we have layer mask on our image. We're going to grab our round brush tool. Or what I like to do is use your gradient tool. I'm going to have it black to white. And you want to go ahead and start from the top and hold shift to make a perfect line and drag down so that it blends in well. And you can do this until you're comfortable. Um, if it's black to white, if you go like this a few times and you do it again, it will, it will change. So if you want to make sure it's a perfect gradient, you can always do black to transparent, which is the transparent here. And just put your color tab at the black. So black is your foreground color, and then you can simply do that. And if it's too much, you can just go higher and drag down lower to blend more, like so. Now. I'm going to hide that one because I forgot that that's not my background image actually. My background image is the distorted city. It's actually my background image. So I'm going to bring that in, drag it to the bottom, and have it set like so. And as you see, you can see the line. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my transparent flip it around so that whites appear. And I'm going to blend this upwards like so. Then I'm going to make this one appear. Control A, I'm going to have it center, so V for a keyboard for mutual, and I'm going to center this one, like so, maybe, I'm going to lower the opacity so I can see where they lie, add a layer mask, and I'm going to use my round brush tool with black as my foreground color, and I'm going to delete these two people on it, um, the main characters, like so, and I'm going to have it that it fades slightly and I'm going to make the background appear a little bit. I'm going to leave this side like so. Just have this little building appear more. So I'm going to go into more depth and make my brush smaller like so. I'm going to try to bring in this building in much more clear. So that looks like it's a part of the background like so. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and on this one, I'm going to black to transparent, use my gradient, and I'm going to glide it upwards like so, just a little bit. So we have something like this here. Oops, zoomed in too much. So now I'm going to drag in my last, last background texture, which is this one here. I'm going to click and drag it over. I'm going to lower the opacity first of all. Control T. And I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to bring it over like so. I'm going to use my round brush tool and make it really big. Like about that. And on my layer mask with black, I'm going to blend it in. So you have something like so. And I'm going to keep it lowered. But the opacity about to about 81 so that you can see some of the background and some of the meteorite and it merges in much better so now I'm going to go ahead and drag in my main characters which is a block B I'm going to use my magnetic lasso tool and I'm going to do a little quick selection around them it will not be perfect and I did this in the original poster as well I did not cut them up with perfection and I'm just going to glide it around, let it grab onto the lines it sees, and then just select it. And I'm going to grab my regular polygon last one, just add to the bottom of the actual selection, like so. I'm going to duplicate the image, I'm going to click Refine Edge while on my lasso tool. I'm going to use my little brush here to have it grab to the lines of block B and it's going to grab onto the hairlines, the line of the clothing and everything. And this is what I did. It's not going to be perfect but I'll make it work. We're going to grab on the edge here as well. And as you see it has something like this. You can go over and see if it Wings more, takes away, hold alt to take erase from, like so, and then just kind of, hopefully it looks like more, it really just depends on your overall selection. I'm going to go ahead and contrast it, shift my edges outwards, like so, and I'm just going to select the okay, I really don't mind the way it looks, because I can always fix it. As you can see, I have that, I'm at a layer mask, and it's going to give me this rough selection and I can always fix it by going out with my brush tool with white bring my hardness up, my brush small and I'm just going to bring back in certain parts that are missing from the photo and then I'm going to put it onto my background so I'm going to fix this up and then put it on my background and come back when I'm done so here I have the image and I'm just going to move it like so as you can see it's still not perfect by J. Hill's edge and everything that's fine I'm going to make them thinner as possible like so, I'm just going to zoom in with my brush tool and just try to fix it more. I'm actually going to use the lasso tool and just try to connect to the lines here because I can actually see the lines more better now. Since it's on a more lighter background. And have black as my background color and just hit backspace to delete from the selection like so. Since we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and bring in one of the zombies. You can choose from zombie 1, zombie 2. I use zombie 2. It's more creepier that way. I'm going to go ahead and use my magnetic glass tool and just have it grasp onto the zombie as well. It's just an easier way to do things, to be honest. Like so, you can just refine edge, and that's what I'm going to do as well, like I do with the B. And it grabs much more better than this one. It's not as bad, so I'm going to shift the edge outwards, smooth it, none, maybe. I'm going to leave it like so, and I'm going to duplicate it, add a layer mask, and then move this image over. Like so, and I'm going to behind block B, and I'm going to have it like so. Control T, and I'm going to stretch it out a bit so that it kind of looks like its hands are right behind block B, like so. Then on the layer mask here, I'm going to have my gradient color transparent. So if my color so that black is visible, and I'm going to fade upwards so that he fades in. And I'm actually going to lower his opacity to about 
so we can't really see the disdain of the actual selection as well. So now we have that, we're going to want to merge our colors so that they blend more seamlessly. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an eyedropper tool. We're going to click a color in the background. I'm going to do a bluish color. I pick up foreground color, um, preferably a dark one. I'm going to choose dark one from Kellogg's jacket. And I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map. Click OK. And I'm going to get something like this. If your color turns invert, you can click reverse. And I'm going to set this to soft light so that the colors merge a little bit better. So now we have that kind of done, we can actually add the two textures that are going to kind of give it more of a grungy feel. Uh, so we're going to bring this one in and it's just a random plaited looking texture. I'm going to image, rotate, we're going to rotate 90. I'm just going to simply just drag it onto our image. Like So we're going to have it above all the images. As you can see, it doesn't fit fully. Control T, you can just stretch out the sides. It doesn't have to be proportioned correctly. Um, for it to look nice. I'm actually going to select the whole canvas as well and just go select inverse and click OK and then backspace. Bleh. Select the canvas and then just add a layer mask. So it just stays proportion with the actual um, image as you can see here on the size. I'm going to set this to maybe soft light or I chose to set it to overlay. I'm gonna have layer well already has layer mask added to it and I'm just gonna simply use a round brush tool um, with black and I'm just going to have it my opacity at a low and I'm just gonna kinda at like maybe thirty five pixels, make sure the hardness is at zero and I'm just going to kinda slowly brush away some of the darkness that is applied to like killing in them. The ends I don't mind, and I'm going to kind of bring back some darkness onto the edge of the zombie so that he can blend in more with the um, background. Like so. And then we're going to drag in our last texture, which is this one here. It's just a grunge one again. I'm going to flip it like the other one. And drag it in. On top, of course, I'm going to set it right about here. I'm going to set this one to lighten. I'm going to add a layer mask. Do the same method. I'm going to just use black and just delete from the image what I don't want on there. Like just here and there. Move some back around that edge and that edge there. And now we have the demo, we can actually start our coloring. Now, as I said, I didn't remember coloring ideas, so I'm just going to go ahead and just mess with some PSCs. So I'm going to go browse in my bridge and look for some PSCs and come back. So here we are in bridge, and I'm going to drag in a few textures. Not sure which ones are going to look good, so I'm just going to drag in random ones. Maybe not that one. I'll drag in this one, maybe this one. and this one here. Drag them all into Photoshop. Let them open in their own tabs. We're going to group this one first. I'm going to click and drag it over. Drag it on top and see how it looks. Now, this one actually looks good. Um, there's one that's a bit that darkens the image too much, which is this burgundy color. So I'm going to fade it to maybe about 20%. And that actually looks nice. And then I'm actually going to lighten the whole PSC by maybe 75 pixels or 85. I can even add a layer mask to the image and kind of just slowly erase what I don't want to cover because like um, certain spots are too dark like J Hill and Kyung a bit so I'm just going to feather it out slightly like that and let's see how this one looks there's not a whole bunch of like textures and stuff built on top of it, so it might be really overpowering. It actually looks kind of good if you want it to be mostly washed out, which is decent, but it's not what I like, so I'm going to say no to that one. 
I'm going to use this last one here. Drag both of these in. Drag them on top. You can see which ones too. Let's leave that one in. I'm going to do about 64%. And um, this color is not bad. I'm going to actually do a little bit of my own. So I'm going to layer, uh, new adjustment layer. I'm going to do curves and I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to set my curves down dark and bring the brights up a bit, like so. I'm going to actually add a vibrance in as well. And I'm going to bump up the saturation so that you can see a little bit more of the color of the vibrance, like that. And it actually doesn't look that bad to me. I'm going to add one last thing, which is a pattern. So, I'm going to layer, new fill layer, pattern. And I'm going to add like a grunge paper type pattern, which I have. Let's see. We'll do this one here. I'm going to add this to color burn. Or linear burn. Let's see which one looks good. We can actually set it to, I think I like color burn the most. Um, it already has a layer mask added to it. So I'm just going to use my black and just erase mostly from everywhere. I'm going to pull up my opacity and erase from Kyung and them and just leave it in the background and lower the opacity a lot like so. And then you can add your text and everything and once you're done you're going to go ahead and make sure you clicked on the last layer in your layers palette. Shift Control Alt E to merge layers visible and then you can sharpen it going select. I mean filter sharpen. You can do a sharpen or a smart sharpen. I prefer smart sharpen. I like the smart sharpen mines by 500 by 0 0.3 pixels. And then I reduce my opacity about 50% on that layer. And this is what I have. I hope you guys like this tutorial. I know it's not exactly identical to the other one, but I don't remember what I did with the um, coloring effect. But I hope you guys like this tutorial. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I hope to have more for you guys soon. Bye!